Hello and welcome to this two-part series on ureteral injury. This first part will be a basic intro of ureteral injury and GYN surgeries and intraoperative diagnosis including cystoscopy and different agents that can be administered to assist with cystoscopy. Uh, this is not medical advice, it's just for education. The incidence of a ureteral injury is approximately 1-2%, to and this is important to know when you're counseling patients on the risks of a hysterectomy or major GYN surgery, letting them know there's a 1-2% to of ureteral injury. The mode of hysterectomy with the highest rate of ureteral injury is laparoscopic, and that is between an abdominal hysterectomy, laparoscopic hysterectomy, and vaginal hysterectomy, and this did not include robotic hysterectomies. And the lowest rate is a vaginal hysterectomy. There are um, several different ways a ureteral injury can occur, in, including ligation, crushing, thermal, transection, or kinking of the ureter. So there are several locations that the ureter could be injured in a GYN surgery. We'll start with the first one that we have listed here, which is uh, near the IP, or when we're going to ligate the IP. Um, and you can see that in this photo here. And then also um, in this photo down here is um, notes that this could be during a lymph node dissection um, because the ureter is usually seen crossing the external iliac vessels from lateral to medial, as you can see here, um, at the base of the IP or um, actually at the bifurcation of the common iliac, um, which you cannot really see in this photo here. Um, you can see it on this side. So um, that's a nice depiction here. And then uh, second, the cardinal ligament where the ureter crosses under the uterine artery. And um, I'd say about 80% of the time, uh, ureteral injury is at the level of the uterine artery. The third is where the ureter traverses the bladder wall here. So if you think during our hysterectomy where we're taking the bladder down, um, really knowing where the ureter is at that point is um, would be good. And then the fourth is lateral pelvic sidewall above the uterosacral ligament. And I think this is an excellent picture that shows the proximity of the uterosacral ligament and the ureter. Um, so if you think about when we're doing our hist, Hopefully we have had our 45 degrees D clamp coming in here um, and that will have this entire pedicle kind of go out laterally and then our straight clamps are coming down this way. And you know, we are angling this because if you just look, if you angle this way, you're uh, at high risk of getting right into that ureter. Um, and so we're coming down and each bite is kind of floating this tissue out more lateral. Um, and then also, if you think of when we are, um, we've taken our IP and we're getting the posterior um, leaf of the round coming in here parallel to the floor, um, also the ureter is in very close proximity there. So multiple areas that we need to be aware of. Um, essentially, we need to be aware of where the ureter is at all times. And so now we're at diagnosis and the goal is immediate recognition and repair of injuries. And so ideally that would be intraoperatively. This has been shown to improve outcomes and be less morbid for patients. There are um, several ways to identify an injury, um, direct observation, and this can be a preventative measure as well as a way to identify as, um, if you see the injury occur um, because you knew where the ureter was. Um, you can directly observe the ureter through the peritoneum or um, we commonly will do a retroperitoneal dissection um, and locate the ureter and that way we are sure that the ureter is um, well below or away from the surgical field. And then the other way is cystoscopy plus or minus stents. Um, so with a cysto, you can um, look for the ureteral jets. And then um, sometimes we'll place stents if we anticipate that the ureter will be difficult um, to find. Um, 
or if we think the dissection will be difficult. And stenting doesn't in and of itself prevent injury, but it can improve intraoperative recognition of the ureter, also intraoperative recognition of an injury, and aid repair. The goal of cystoscopy is to visualize ureteral jets. You can also administer agents of color to assist in the visualization of the jets. Oftentimes we won't, but if it is difficult to see, then we will um, call for some agent of color. You should see jets within five to 10 minutes of your cysto. Uh, greater than 20 minutes warrants further investigation. The first agent we'll talk about is sodium fluorescein. Um, the dose of this would be 1 ml of 10% sodium fluorescein and 9 ml of normal saline, and you administer 1 ml of this intravenously. Um, and then you'll see, in this like in this photo here, uh, bright fluorescent yellow urine. Indigocarmine is another very popular agent. Um, this was probably the most used um, not back in the day, but <laughs> in the past, and then there was a shortage. So um, they had we had to come up with better ways or other ways of directly visualizing the ureteral jets. Um, but typical dose is uh, 2.5 to 5 ml of a 0.8% solution. And as you can see here, the concentration is 0.8 plus or minus 0.1. Um, this is largely excreted in the urine rather than reabsorbed. And you'll see a blue urine. Um, I, I just note that this was discontinued in 2015 due to a shortage. Um, there were two companies making it and one company stopped making it due to um, not having the raw materials. And um, you ne do need to be aware that patients allergic to sulfa, um, indigocarmine can cross-react with sulfa. So um, you should be aware of that and avoid. You can. There are other agents that you can use. Um, and then also it could have a mild presser effect. So if you're being very cautious in patients with cardiac or vascular disease, you may want to avoid indigo, indigo carmine. Other agents that you can use, um, IV methylene blue. Uh, this is less commonly used due to the risk of meth methemoglobinemia and serotonin syndrome. So a, a dose greater than seven mg per kg can affect susceptible individuals, specifically patients with G6PD deficiency, and then serotonin syndrome in any patients that are taking SSRIs or monoamine oxidase inhibitors. You should not use this in pregnant patients and you should not use this in renally impaired patients. Um, methylene blue is supplied in one ml ampules of 10 mg per ml and then it's administered as 0.1 to 0.2 ml per kilogram injected IV over several minutes. And then also um, a, another agent that was used was dextrose in sterile water, uh, but this is, has definitely fallen out of favor and is less commonly used. It is associated with nearly double incidence of post-op UTIs compared with normal saline. If you know or you're planning to do a cystoscopy, you can have your patient orally take Peridium, um, 200 milligrams, one hour before surgery. Your, the urine will be a reddish orange, um, and this is cleared by the kidneys, so you want to avoid this in anyone with a creatinine clearance less than 50. You should see jets within five to 10 minutes. Greater than 20 minutes does warrant, warrant further investigation. You could administer a small fluid bolus or uh, administer a diuretic, like IV Lasix, you can do 5 to 20 milligrams, um, but be cautious in patients who have renal compromise. If you still do not see any ureteral jets, um, if you are laparoscopic or um, doing an abdominal hysterectomy, you can look into the abdomen for leakage of dye, and if it's colored, you may be able to see it. Um, you can place a ureteral stent. Um, that should go easily if there is no injury, um, although if there's a thermal injury, we, we would not know in any of these methods. Um, and then intraoperative IV pilogram or retrograde ureteral pilogram um, could also be performed. On the right is a photo of a retrograde ureteral pilogram, which demonstrates an abrupt cutoff of the right distal ureter, um, which was suture ligated um, with the citation below. So um, several methods 
to verify a ureter roll, um, to verify ureter roll integrity, actually. And that's it. So next up um, would be part two, and we'll go over the post-op diagnosis of your ureteral injury and then the um, repairs based on location. Here are my references, and feel free to um, check me out on Instagram and newly on Twitter. Thanks, guys.